Okay, so hey guys, um, I, today I wanted to uh, talk about the T2122 indicator. We might talk about some of the other T2s here, but particularly the T2122. And one of the reasons this came up, and, and I thought, you know, since I'm missing tomorrow, you know, heading out on vacation, I'd spend a little time here on, on this indicator and talk about why. I think it is one of the most useful indicators out there. Now, I, I take it from a little bit different approach than I think a lot of people might do with T2122. We, we've gotten, gotten into this idea that an indicator, that there should be this indicator out there that is going to give us <clears throat> The absolute time and moment that a market reverses that's what the market seems to want nowadays um, that there must be something out there that gives us the perfect you know we're looking for that indicator that tells us when to buy when to sell we don't have to take any responsibility for looking at price action well if you're looking for that t2122 is not that but one of the reasons T2122 has been so incredibly effective for me, um, as you guys know, one of the things that I credit for me, um, for my success in trading, is this idea of doing this market review every day really setting my impression for how I want to trade the market today. And part of that review is um, a look at T2122. So first off, what is T2122? It's, it's, it's classified under, under the TC2000 website as company fundamental indicator. <clears throat> but you know, I, I'm going to say not so much. Because all it really is, if you can read the, read the little watermark here, it's a four-week new high, new low ratio. So basically they take the New York Stock Exchange um, and they take all of the new highs, all of the new lows, and they create a ratio. And that ratio plots on the chart. Now, as you can see, um, I look at you can look at T2122 as a candlestick chart, and I think it's absolutely worthless. Okay, but when you plot it as a line chart, <clears throat> it has tremendous value. Now, T2122 is is just oscillates <clears throat> up and down based on that ratio of how many stocks are making new highs, how many stocks are making new lows. Okay, and it plots between 100 and 0. Okay, so it's a very, very simple indicator to read. And I think it is probably one of the best, hands down, of oversold or overbought indicators. Now, let me qualify that by saying T2122 does not tell me which direction the market is going to go. So get that out of your mind right now, that it's going to give me the clue that, hey, it's going to go up today or it's going to go down today. It doesn't do that. What it does is it tells us that when we're in these regions, and you can see that what I've done is I've plotted on this chart a a 90 line and a 100 line a 10 line and a zero line okay we're plotted between 100 and zero so these are maximum limits on the indicator okay 10 and 90 are that range or that zone in fact you guys have seen me um for a long long time i have a no had a note up here um that I moved along so everyone could see it. Whoops. Where I said, this is the bearish reversal zone. 
Okay. Down here is the bullish reversal zone. Now, why is that the case? When markets get overbought and we, we stretch our indexes really high, part of that evaluation on a daily basis is where are we in the scheme of things? What's our position in the world here, I guess, on, on markets, on indexes? And so when I look, if I were to go to the diamonds here and I were to compare the diamonds position, we've obviously broken support levels. We've stretched to the downside in this downside move. And we've gotten pretty darn bearish. We're testing some price support levels here in the chart. Okay, so we know when we stretch away and, and we talk about this all the time, when we stretch away from a um, just a moving average, we get carried away and move down using the, the, the 3A trap, our trendinator here. When we stretch too far away from that in a move, whether it be up or down, okay, we would expect a rebound, a reversion to the mean, essentially, where we bounce back up or we pull back to retest support levels. Because remember, the market, all the market is, is an auction. It is an auction where we're trying to determine between the bulls and the bears what the correct price is. So as we move up, the bulls are saying valuations should be higher. As we pull back, the bears are saying, no, the valuations have gotten too high temporarily. Okay, so there's that profit taking wave that comes into the market. Just think about it. Every time we move up, there's so much um, quick in and out trading in the market. So for every reaction, you guys have heard this old statement forever and ever, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? And that's just the, the ebb and flow of the market. So we're bullish in the market. People are buying, buying, buying. And then all of a sudden, we see that uh, we may have gone a little bit too far and then the profit takers, okay, start coming into that into that market, pushing things back down, okay? So we get profit coming into the market, and we get that nice little ebb and flow that occurs, and that's what creates our peak and valley type patterns in the market. Now, when we, when we run into patterns that are we move up or down and we go sideways. This is where buyers and sellers, just imagine there are there's a line in the sand here. Sellers are up here, buyers are here, and right now they're even. They're kind of in agreement on price, okay? And we've seen those areas. Sometimes they can be really wide and really dangerous. This one here in the diamonds, in the Dow, it was 800 points in range, okay? That makes for a dangerous little chop zone being created in markets, okay? Now, support and resistance gets created when we draw out these patterns. So if we move up in an upside trend, this becomes price support. That becomes the proof of, of trend. And the more evidence we build of that, we pull back again. Now we have trend and price support holding us in the chart. When we move up and we consolidate, that gives us these clear levels of short-term price support. And as long as we're following trend, we get those bullish and bearish signals in the market. Now T2122 is telling us when we've carried things a little bit too far in the short term. So when we look at T2122 and we look at it this way, it's telling us right now that the sellers maybe have gotten a little bit carried away. Okay, and think about that for a second. It's pretty common, we're human beings, right? We all trade 
um, with emotion in the market. And unfortunately, because of the wild speculation that we see in the market nowadays, we have added a lot more volatility and a lot more emotion to the market. Okay, so when we sell and sell and sell, we get to a point where we've reached a place where, you know, we've probably taken that too far, that stocks have pulled back so much that the bulls are saying, now, wait a minute, these values are now too low. We should bounce back up. Now, think about this on the, on the other side of that. If you're a bear, okay, if you're a bear and you've been shorting, pushing, 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 pushing to the downside, and now you're looking at a position where I want to take some profits if we bounce. So what happens when short trades get covered? If you think about this in the market, when it comes to stock trading, short covering requires a position to be bought, right? How do we get out of a short trade? If we're short stock, the only thing we can do to cover that position is to buy the stock. Okay, now that's just flattening out the position in your account, but that also gets counted into the buy side of the market. We're covering that short, we're relieving that downside pressure in the market. Okay, so when that occurs, when those bears take profits from their short position, that relieves that downside pressure in the market and that inspires some of the bulls to step in and push and maybe pick up some buying for that short term maybe upside move and I say maybe because we don't know if we're going to be able to push through these resistance levels in the chart on the Dow you know if we look at at this chart clearly we've got some substantial resistance levels and downtrends that we have to deal with so we could relieve that pressure that overstretched condition in that short-term move by rallying back up finding those resistance areas and then the bears can come back in okay now, whether they come back in, that's still a question. We don't know that for sure. I'm not trying to predict that the bears will come back in there, but just suggesting that's where we would expect them to come back in. The other possibility is in that situation, we've got that resistance and downtrend in play, and maybe we just bounce around and we consolidate out toward the trend, and the bears then have that opportunity to exercise a little bit more press to the downside. So in relieving that pressure, T2122 is giving us that indication, giving that indication in this chart that we should be watching for that potential relief rally to occur, that potential bounce. So think about this in the context of your trading. Okay, if I'm short the market, if I've participated in the downside of this market, and I see that T2122 is reaching an oversold condition here in the market where we've stretched this rubber band a little bit too far, well, would it be a good idea to be taking some profits? <clears throat> Show of hands, guys, type a lot. Is it a good time to take profits when we reach an oversold condition if we're short? Yeah, and isn't that exactly what we did? On that big, sharp move down in the market, we took our short positions off and we took some profits. Okay. But if you remember what I've been talking about in the morning prep and what I've been talking about in the evenings when we're winding up the day, is T2122 is telling us that we should be nearing a point of bounce, and nearing a point of a relief rally. But what could change that, guys? Well, terrible 
manufacturing numbers, terrible retail sales numbers, more banks failing, that contagion spreading in banks. Now the reason I'm bringing that up is T2122 doesn't tell us the exact date and time we're going to bounce. It's telling us we should be watching for the potential of a bounce, but we have to put it into context of the things that are happening around us in the market, right? We're in a position where we believe a relief rally should begin, that we're due for one. But if we still have more banks collapsing, we're not likely going to see that occur, right? Or occur strongly. All right, so we can linger down here in this lower region like we did over here when the market was very, very bearish. We lingered. We had these big snap rallies, but we lingered in this lower area for some time, trying to sort through the details of the economics and the numbers that, are, that come out, earnings reports and things like that. During earnings season, and earnings were beating better than, or doing better than expected this last quarter, you can see that we lingered up here. And as a result, we were showing that the market was up here in the bearish reversal zone. Okay? It didn't give us the, the exact day and time that sellers would come in but it certainly was giving us clues that we had stretched this too far. And consequently, what did we do in the Dow during this period of time? Well, in the Dow, we stayed up here, but we were locked in this very, very wide choppy range of about 800 points. We consolidated. We couldn't really go any higher because we'd already pushed so many stocks to the upside that there really wasn't a whole lot of upside room based on valuations that we could really push those stocks anymore. So we would get these earnings reports and then we would just whipsaw in these ranges, okay? So when we're up here and we're seeing these um, consolidations or big resistance levels in the chart, we need to respect that, and if we tie that into T2122, well, consequently, you guys are, are understanding why I was looking short or for short positions in the market. Right? I was looking for those clues, not using this as a prediction, but looking for the price action clues that it was beginning. Okay, that the sellers were beginning to come in. Now this last time, you know, we had on those short positions and, and we got um, lucky that all of a sudden banks started to fail. Okay, there's no skill in that because we didn't know that was coming. That's luck. Don't, um, don't confuse a move that works really good in your favor as genius. Okay, because we don't know these things are going to suddenly crop up and move. We just happen to get, we happen to be on the right side. Now, here's the cool thing. I'll tell you this over and over and over again. If you respect T2122 and you wait for the signals for those reversals, either to the downside or to the upside, you'll find out that you catch a lot of the big moves. That come in the market and the reason is is because well think about it guys when we start to roll over that's when the pressure points start building if we roll over from the top we start to roll over that's where the pressure points are start going to start to happen that will trigger negative news events that's all it is it's just we roll over and oh my gosh it gets worse all of a sudden and negative news events banks start to fail And that's all it is. It's not genius. It's not, it's not anything surprising. When we're in a bearish, 
um, the bullish reversal zone, well, what happens? We start to get any kind of inclination, any kind of news event out there that inspires those bulls a little bit and short covering begins to happen. And those short covering um, positions start coming off um, in the market and we start to rally back up. Okay. Now included in this, by the way, guys, um, is this helping? Is this making some sense? Because I, I learned this week that maybe I wasn't doing a very good job of explaining T2122. And, and I'll tell you guys that I think this is, I, I mean, if there's a reason to have TC2000, this is one very good reason to have it because you don't get this indicator anywhere else. Okay. Um, it really gives me the clue. So if I can compare a place where we have moved down substantially in the market, okay, let's just talk some concepts. We've moved down substantially in our indexes. Our T2122 is in the bullish reversal zone. Should I be looking for a whole bunch of short trades here? Probably not, right? I probably should be expecting a relief rally. So if I am short, I want to be taking profits. Now, there's a distinction here. If we're downtrending in the market, just because we're in the bullish reversal zone, does that mean we should suddenly flip to just be all bullish? Think about that, guys, just a second. If we're, if we're looking like this in our indexes with resistance above and downtrends, should we just suddenly go, oh, I've just got to buy up stocks like crazy here? That should be pretty clear as a no, right? It doesn't mean that you can't buy long stock positions, okay? But it doesn't necessarily mean that we've sounded the all clear that everything is bullish. In fact, if you do take long stock positions in here, and it's perfectly acceptable to do that, do take long, long stock positions, as they rally toward this resistance, you need to be thinking about what? Closing those trades and taking profits. Okay. Now, one of the common mistakes that I think occurs here in the market nowadays is everyone is trying to predict that when we fall, I have to buy the low on that stock. If we're rallying up out of a bottom here, still in a downtrend, is it a good idea to buy that stock that may be trying to bottom here? Or would you prefer finding that stock that in the bearish trend is still holding bullish trend patterns. Which one do you choose? Well, for me, if I'm still in a bear trend and this stock is bearish, I'm expecting it maybe to bounce up to the downtrend and no more. If I want to be bullish in this situation, I only want to be looking at stocks holding bullish trends because they're going to be the easiest stocks to move up. But I'm going to be thinking about those upside moves while I'm in a downtrend as very short term positions. Get a few days of rally in there and get those profits as I approach resistance in the chart. Is that making some sense? So T2122 is giving me clues to be looking for a relief rally. Now I have to be picky about the trades I look at 
for that relief rally. Stocks that are currently downtrending are of no interest to me because they can pop a day and then completely reverse, right? I want to look at stocks that are proving support levels, proving to hold. So for example, you know, when we look at a stock like CRWD, if I'm looking for the bullish bounce in the market to occur, I'm looking for stocks that are holding support, holding trend. Those are the stocks I want to take advantage of in a relief rally bounce. The AMDs of the world, like I brought up the other day, okay? Those are the stocks that I want to be buying, okay, for the relief rally bounce. This making sense? I don't want to be picking stocks off the bottom. They're going to be harder to make them rally if they're still in a downtrend, right? It's harder for them to attract buyers. Yes, you've got the speculators that like to come in off the bottom and think they're geniuses because they can pick bottoms. But the fact of the matter is they rarely win more than 50% 50, 50, uh, 50 of their trades on doing that because there's so much volatility in those bottoms. Okay. Now the same is true if we're downtrending. If we're downtrending in a market or in the indexes, like we certainly have seen here, um, not that far back, where we were downtrending overall in the market, every rally back, I'm going to be looking for the T2122 to be showing me I'm up in the bearish reversal zone. If the T2122 is showing me I'm in a bearish reversal zone and I'm getting resistance in the chart, and T2122 telling me I'm reaching an overbought condition, I want to be looking for short entry trades. As long as that downtrend continues, when we rally back, I want to be taking off any long-term positions at resistance and looking for the short trade to occur. Okay, not that it will occur, not that it has to occur, not that it's a prediction that it's going to occur. I want to be looking for the price action clues that show me that it's beginning to happen. And I think there's a big distinction there. Don't you guys think, um, I hope I'm getting that across. There's a big distinction there. We like to look at an indicator. We like to look at something like T2122 and we want it to tell us what comes next. We want it to pre predict for us. But as you guys know, that's never the case. When it comes to me, there's never a trade ever that is based on an indicator. The indicator tells me that something could occur and I'm looking for it to occur in price action. And I wait for it to occur in the price action. Okay, sorry, that's a two day. Make sense? So if I'm looking for those relief rally bounces, like AMD the other day, we were down here in the bottom and it hammered near that price support. And everyone knows that I said, hey guys, look at AMD, it may be a buy point here. 
Now, you have to decide whether that's a good trade for you or not, and everybody's got to evaluate a trade based on your risk tolerance. But you can see how that works, right? We're using the internals of the market. We're using that, that emotion of the market in our advantage. It's giving us clues. I talk about this all the time, how I want to move with the market, not predict the market. Predicting the market doesn't work. We all know that because we've tried it for years and look at your accounts. It doesn't work to predict the market. So stop it. Start moving with the market. Now, I explained this yesterday to someone in coaching. The T2122 is kind of like the market breathing. Now, think about that for, for a second. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be heading out hiking here, right? And if, if I'm um, moving too quickly to the upside, what do I have to do? I have to stop and take a break. Take a breath. Relieve some of that pressure. Moves up. I have to stop. I have to take a breath and relieve some of that pressure. If I tumble down too far, I have to stop. I have to rest. I have to breathe to get ready for that next potential move to the downside. So T2122 is kind of like that reflection of the market just inhaling and exhaling. Okay, when we're in the rally mode, we're inhaling, we're moving, everything is great, and then we get the profit takers that bring in the exhale. Okay, we inhale and we move, and then the profit takers come in and we just breathe out, exhale. We cannot breathe in or breathe out for an unlimited period of time. We pass out, right? Same thing is true in the market. There's only so much air we can suck in all at once. There's only so much air we can expel all at once. And then we have to stop and, and breathe for a second. So T2122, I think, is a great reflection of that inhaling and exhaling of the market. We overbuy, we oversell, we inhale, we exhale. And if we move with that breathing of the market, trading becomes a whole lot easier. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't require us to predict a thing. Do you guys see how, how important that is? I want to move with the direction. I want to move with that inhale and exhale action of the market. It's just the auction of the market going off. We move too far and there's enough people out there that say, hey, it's too high, it's time to take profits, and we exhale. We move down too fast and the short traders say, hey, it's about ready to take a big breath and we short cover and the market inhales and we rally a little bit. Okay, we're just moving back and forth in those trends. Just that market breathing in and out. Okay, so if we can get in sync with that movement of the market breathing in and out, it's a whole lot easier to trade, right? If you want to be a long only trader in a downtrending market, where do you do that? You start looking for buy signals only when we're down here, right? We don't want to be looking for buy signals when we're up here if we're a downtrending market. Make sense? 
Any questions on any of this? Uh, VP, no, I really have not used it for intraday. Um, could you? Well, I think if you look at this chart, there's a 15 minute, could you? Yes, I think you could. Because short term overbought and oversold works the same way, right? If we look at, at a diamonds five minute chart, We inhale, we exhale, okay? It's the same thing going on in a short-term chart. It's the same patterns, it's just a different time frame. It's the same thing if we look at weekly charts. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, if we look at weekly charts, it's the same thing. Longer term, we're breathing in and out. Okay. So when you look at T2122, think about that in your timing of your trades. When you're doing your daily evaluation, I've talked about this many times before. One of the things that I think is extremely important is you do a daily evaluation of the market. If you're coming into, the, into your trading room, turn on your computer five minutes before the market opens and think you're, think you're prepared to trade, I'm here to tell you, you're not ready. You need to look at the things that are affecting the market, the earnings reports, the economic reports, the things that could make dramatic changes in our market direction. We need to be incorporating that into our thought process. We need to be incorporating into that thought process the position, are we really sold off and down testing a support level where we could get a relief rally or are we all the way up here at resistance where we could see those bears lining up for an, another attack we need to be thinking about the position that we're in in our indexes okay and if we incorporate t2122 into that it puts us in sync with that breathing in and out of the market. And then we can participate in those moves with much more confidence that we're moving with the market, not trying to predict the market or not trying to fight the market. Okay. I can tell you early on in my trading, I spent so much time trying to fight the market and it was just like, you know, back in the day when Mike Tyson was in his prime and me going in to try and fight him. It wasn't going to work. In fact, there was a real good chance he was going to kill me. Okay. Instead of killing you, what the market does is it kicks you in the face, steals all your lunch money and laughs as it leaves. We fight the market. The market is way bigger than us. It's way stronger than us individually. We can't fight it. So when we rally into resistance points up here, if you're trying to buy up just long positions only, what are you doing? You're literally putting yourself in conflict with that breathing in and out of the market. We want to choose to see the market as only bullish and I only want to be buying long stocks. 
But in all likelihood, we're making a very big mistake. We're fighting the direction. Okay. Uh, Byron, if you're talking about the diamonds, I, I don't know what you're talking about here. Um, 408 April puts. I, 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 spy. Okay. Um, if we look at the spy. We're certainly inhaling, right? We're breathing in. And we're approaching resistance levels in the chart. Okay, pretty substantial resistance levels. But if we look at our T2122, are we anywhere near a major resistance level in the chart? T2122. Could we still be breathing in for a while? So, if you choose to buy the 408 puts right here, that's okay. But I'm going to ask you the question of how much risk tolerance do you have? Can you allow the SPY to rally back up to the downtrend? Can you hold those puts? Even if we push on through and come up here. So that's something to consider, don't you think? Now, I'm not saying we're going to go up there. I'm saying we could, we could do this as well. Right? Now the other part of that question, Byron, is look at this big bullish candle. If I'm buying 408 puts here, what am I doing? I'm straight up trying to predict that I know more about the market than the market knows. Chris, there's not. Um, T2122, you're only going to find it on TC2000. Okay, so what did I say about predicting? Could you be right here? Yes. And what did I say about predicting? About a 50-50 win-loss ratio. You could be right and we could fail here, right? We could see that failure come in and we drop on down and we continue to head down. But would anybody be surprised with that bullish candle there? That not only are we wrong, but we're really wrong. And then who's to blame for doing that? Well, me and me alone, right? Well, Jim, it really works with anything. I, I mean, certainly it works well with indexes and ETFs, but it works very well with anything. Again, if I am in the bearish reversal zone, like we are, I mean, the bullish reversal zone, then I want to be looking for stocks that are holding good upside trends.
Now that can be ETFs or indexes. Right? I want to be looking at those charts that are giving me proof of nice bullish activity. It's easier for them to move up. Whether it be an ETF, whether it be anything, it's going to be easier for them to move up if the market is inhaling. Yeah, and all you'd have to do is write a script, Carlos, that creates a ratio for all of the stocks being traded in the New York Stock Exchange, which making what's making the new high, new low, and have it create a ratio. That's a pretty big task. Let me just say this, guys. With the way I use T2122, do you guys think it has value? Is it worth 25 bucks a month for the value? Can you make money with T2122? If you combine it with your technical analysis of the market, it, TC2000 is a freaking bargain. Okay. Because it pays for itself. Just take these two trades, guys, that I've been talking about here. I alerted on these. When we were in the bullish reversal zone, and I set the alert here on CRWD, would that trade have paid for a full year of TC2000? Easy. What about AMD? Would that one trade paid for TC2000? Yes. You need the gold, Byron. You need the gold. You don't need the platinum at all. Here. I'll give you this, guys. If, if you're thinking about doing it, check it out. This gives you a discount. Makes it cheaper. Okay. You can go there and check it out and get the... And by the way, I mean, I still think... Besides T... Um, T2122, TC2000 is still head and shoulders above any other charting platform out there that I know of. People will spend hours and hours and hours trying to make another trading platform do even a portion of what T2122 or, or, or TC2000 does in such an intuitive way, it's easy to get to where you need to be. It's fascinating to me that we will spend years trying to come up with the perfect indicators and the perfect scan, but we won't pay 25 bucks a month for great charts. I, I, that just, 
fascinates me. It's the cheapest business decision that I know of. And when I get to have those indicators like T2122, it's an easy decision to make. Okay, because like I just said, I don't want to be super long this market where we are. But if I look at bullish charts when the market is inhaling, look at how much money can be made really fast. Okay. Now, to me, that's value. I don't need every trade in the market to do that. I need just a couple really decent trades setting up when the market's inhaling to make all the money I need to make. I don't need every trade in the market. I don't need to be chasing everything out there. I need to be looking for those trades setting up in a bullish pattern when we're breathing in. That's all. Okay. Let's take a look at this AMD. How many of you guys would say AMD is reaching a short term overbought condition? This stretch today, if I'm doing a quick in and out trade, I'm closing it today. I don't wait for the black candle. I'm closing it today. I'm taking my money. If you look at the Trendinator, look how far we've pulled away from the Trendinator. Isn't it about time that AMD breathes out or exhales? So when you combine these things together, if you do that morning evaluation, and, and, and I, I will tell you guys that um, combining these things together is just so incredibly powerful to be working well, and it's just more comfortable trading instead of predicting and fighting the market to move with the natural movement of the market. It just makes trading so much easier if we do that. It's one of the reasons I incorporate it into every morning market prep. Okay. So keep those things in mind. Any questions here on T2122? That you don't understand. It gives us just that simple, easy look at when we could start pushing to one way or another. And then we've got to look at those stocks that we've been watching and evaluating, keeping on a list. that's set up with that right move of the market. Okay, remember price is the reason for the trade. It's not the indicator. I will never ever buy a stock because TC2000 or, or uh, T2122 tells me that I should be buying. I buy it when the price tells me it's time to buy it. Okay. Now, let's talk about T2107, T2108. Why do I look at these? These are more of the fundamental 
look at the charts. This All this is is a percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. Okay. Remember, guys, there's only so high we can go before we have to pull back. There's only so low we can go before we need to see a bounce. Okay. So when we get this extraordinary move down and we find support in here, is it logical to assume that at some point in time we will find reason for a little bit of relief to the selling, a bounce back up? Profit takers come in on the sell wave and take their profits by covering stock positions and relieving that pressure. Okay, It doesn't mean we zoom all the way back to the top. We really, as a, as a market, have to get off of this idea of racing in when there's even a clue, a hint, that buyers may be showing up. And then racing for the door when everything starts coming apart. If we're moving with the market itself, we don't have to do that we can see when we're likely to get a relief, that breath in to relieve that selling pressure. But it doesn't mean that the all clear has been sounded, right? If we look in here and we run into price resistance of the chart up here, that would be a reason to be thinking, holy moly, maybe we breathe in too far too fast and it's about time for an exhale. Now, it doesn't mean that we take out these lows. It means we could just relax, rest, put in a higher low, and go higher. But it also doesn't rule out that possibility that we could come back down. Okay. So it's just the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. And if we look at it objectively, it tells us that information that, hey, we might have reached a short-term oversold condition here in the market. T2122 is telling us that, that we may inhale just a little bit and relieve some of that pressure. Okay. Now the things that can change this from occurring Although we're due a relief rally, although we need a relief rally, if we continue to hear that manufacturing is failing, that retail sales are failing, or we get more bank failures, it's going to be pretty hard for the market to breathe in. Okay? That's why we want to look for stocks if we're looking for that breathe in portion of the market. We want to look for stocks trending to the upside, not trying to predict those that are down here are going to go up. Because if we reverse and, and these stocks down here will get punished harder, they will reverse and come all the way back down. These stocks may just find that support and hold. Help me out here, guys. I, I don't want to just beat this. I, I just don't want to beat a dead horse here. But uh, is this making some sense? How it's important to look at these things and look at these as not trying to predict anything, just moving with the market direction. Okay, let's look at T2108. T2108 is another fundamental look at the market and all it is is the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average now I don't know why they chose the 40-day moving average everybody looks at the 50-day moving average but they did they chose the 40-day moving average to base their indicator on it all right so when we see t2108 the percentage of stocks holding above their 40-day moving average down here would it be logical to assume with T2122 on the bottom, we should be expecting some kind of relief rally? 
doesn't mean we're going to zoom all the way back to the top, right? That we should find some kind of relief rally. Certainly doesn't mean that every stock is moving up. In fact, what we might find out is, as I was suggesting before, our relief mount rally may be nothing more than a chop zone before we move on lower. A consolidation. But if I find good quality upside trade stocks in that relief rally, those will be the ones that get the potential move. The easiest move. Okay. Now, certainly, if we hear more bank failures, that contagion spreads. We look down here and we can see, hey, can we go lower? Yeah, we sure can. So that means we have to look at stocks that are giving us a good setup, not predicting that everything in the market is going to bounce and just race back to the top. Okay. The same thing would be true when we're all the way up here. When we were all the way up here and everybody's racing and clamoring and trying to buy and buy and buy and buy and oh my gosh, I missed out. I got to hurry up and buy something. Can you guys see how that was bad thinking? Again, we can only push so high. And then the sellers come in and we exhale. We relieve that buying pressure. So when I've got my fundamentals up here and we're just pressing and pressing and pressing these incredible limits, I know that it's not the time to be buying long positions. It's the time to be taking profits on long positions it's the time to start looking at downtrending stocks for a potential short trade. Moving with the market. So for me, this is an essential part of every day. This gives me that look at the market that helps me stay in sync with the market. You guys ever felt like you've been in the market and it's like everything you do, you get punished doing it? Like everything you do, you get punished doing it. That's a clue that you're out of sync with the market. You're trying to breathe in when the market's exhaling. You're trying to breathe out when the market is inhaling. And it makes it pretty tough to make money when you're out of sync with the market. Stay in the sink. <laughs> Try to keep yourself with that market action and it, it's so much easier to trade. Um, no, it's really not longer term T, um, T2108, T2107. Remember, we're looking at a 200-day moving average, and all it is is that ratio, the percentage of stocks that are holding above their moving averages. That's all it is. So don't look at one as stronger than the other. It's just giving us that clue, okay, you know, that hey we've exhaled enough or we've inhaled you know enough and 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 it's time for a rest or a pullback or a rest or a rally okay
No, it would make sense, right? Doesn't it? I mean, it's pretty logical to think that when we're in a downtrending market, there's going to be fewer stocks holding above their 40-day moving average than those holding above their 200. Right? Yeah, because all we're doing is we're pulling back. We've lost that 40. We're slipping down toward the 200, but we're still holding the 200. Well, I mean, T2123, I know Rick loves this indicator. <laughs> um, but I don't. Okay. I, you know, like with any indicator, it all comes down to how you use it. Um, here's here's the fundamental fact. Okay, T2123. Look at what it's named. The cumulative four-week new high, new low. It's a four-week indicator. Is it going to be slow to react if you're looking for long and short decisions? It's a four week indicator. How many of you are trading with that kind of time frame in mind? Now, once it's trending in a direction, sure, you can stick with the trend on it. And it can help you to stick with the trend. But is it going to give you really good clues? Or is it going to always be late? It's always, always, always delayed. Okay. Now, if you use certainly, if you're gonna if you're gonna use it as an intraday, will you get a faster response to it? Of course, right? You use it at an intraday, you're gonna get a faster response. And you know, use it if you like it. Um, to me, honestly, to me, except once it's already in a trend, following that trend. And, and I can use any moving average for that. Right? In fact, I would kind of trust a three and an eight moving average more than a four week cumulative moving average. Does that make sense? If I'm looking for trend. Now, I'm not trying to say that Rick's doing this wrong. If you know, again, it's how you apply it. If you if you use a tool the same way over and over, and you find it works for you, great. But I have never found T2122 to fit my style of trading. The cumulative effect of this. Well, again, I've, I've got to kind of compare two different time frames of charts. You guys know that I think every time you're trying to compare two different kinds of uh, charts, you're getting conflicts all the time. But that doesn't mean I'm right and he's wrong. Okay? It just doesn't make sense to me and it just doesn't work for me. If I need to see trend, it's very, very easy for me to see trend with the three and an eight indicator, using the trendinator, that kind of thing. That's all I need for trend. 
Okay. That's my two cents worth. Now, you decide whether you like it or not. I, and like I said, apply it effectively and do it over and over and over. It can be useful. I just can't, I, I have just never been able to get my head around how a four week cumulative high low is going to give me as a swing trader any technical advantage of entering or exiting at the right times because it's always delayed. It can't be anything else but delayed. I hope that makes some sense. So you choose what you like to use, and I just, I don't mind either, either way, but just do the same thing over and over. Apply it effectively. If you find it to be working for you, then just keep doing it, right? That's the key, that you use the same tools and you use them repetitively as they show you clues. And that's really the best you can do with indicators. All right, it's just that you 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 pick something and you apply it and you use it the same way every time. I have found for me that T2122 gives me a much better edge of knowing when I should start looking for long trades even in a short market or look for long trades in a long market when I need to be looking for those trades. When I need to be selling long trades. When I need to be looking for short trades. Whether we be in a bull market or a bear market. Okay. And by the way, guys, that none of this should be, <clears throat> if you think about it logically, none of this should be a major surprise because one of the first things we learned in trading was the peak and valley pattern, how the markets move. Now, in the peak and valley pattern, they don't normally talk much about consolidations, but that's part of that pattern, okay? up and down it's the seesaw that we get in the market we move down we rally up we move down we consolidate we move down we rally up. you know what i mean we're following that pattern over and over and over and then these patterns repeat right so we move up enough and then the market falls and we and then we start the downtrend we rally up we hold we start the uptrend And all we're doing with T2122, T2108, and T2107 is we're looking for those clues that we're moving with the market. When we're in these positions and pulling back and the market is trying to breathe in again, those are the trades I want to be looking for. I don't want to be looking for these. I don't want to be looking for these. I want to be looking for these. Okay. Now we can complicate the heck out of this stuff. Okay. By thinking about hedging. All right. I. I want a longer term trade. I pick up an entry here on a position for a longer term trade. 
the stock is doing okay and we rally and rally in the market and then T2122 tells me that we're reaching an overbought condition in the market. Would that be a pretty good time to start thinking about selling a covered call? Right, we can use that indicator for hedging as well. Not just profit taking, but we can use it to hedge. Because if we're just about ready to get some kind of breathe out or even a consolidation, right? I want that extra protection to reduce my risk on the downside if I choose to hold. So it can have that opposite, uh, opposite effect of giving us those right times that we need to start thinking about hedging those trades that we want to hang on to. Yeah, it's, it's just... It's just that clue. You know, we talk about this particularly in options. We want to be right on direction and the timing, right? Now, again, T2122 can stay up here for a while. So it's telling us that we're on the upside, that we should be looking for that profit-taking wave to come. We have to look at the stocks that are moving in a downtrend and are up at resistance for our short trades. It's the price action, not the indicator, that makes the trade. Don't use T2122 to predict. Use it to help you with your timing of your entries. We're down here dancing around in the bottom of T2122. We're expecting some kind of relief to the upside, so we want to look for those bullish charts setting up that we can take advantage of that move, that relief. Okay. So I hope you guys found this to be useful today. Um, if you have any additional questions, I'll answer them real quick, but I'll stop the recording here. Um, I honestly think T2122, if it's used correctly, can help you move with the market so much easier and and get past this idea that that we can predict and we should know um, when a bottom is in or a top is in or those kind of things and and it puts us in that situation where we're just we're, we're just literally making the market show us where it wants to go and then we move with it if it's trending in the middle you, you don't if you look at t2122 you don't normally see us get stuck in the middle very long. We will we will bounce up and down. Okay, so think about it's a good question, VP. If if our market is downtrending, okay, and we see stocks rally back to price resistance, and T twenty one twenty two has only made it to the middle and then we start to see failure candle show up here. We can certainly take those short. Okay, but you wanna think about this. When we're kind of in the middle here on T2122, it's kind of like the market trying to, they got, you know, barbed wire fence and one foot on either side. Okay, now, it's, you're perfectly fine and comfortable if you stand still. But if you move left or right, you're going to get stabbed, right? 
right in the right in the place you don't want to be stabbed. You're going to get stabbed by the barbed wire. Okay, so you want to consider the fact that if we might be showing a bearish pattern here, we're we're downtrending in the market, the odds would favor the downtrend in that situation, right? The odds would favor it. But we also have to be very cognizant of the fact that maybe we get that short move down and then something pops us on through to the upside. And that's why we manage these trades, right? We stop out. Okay. When the market is in that position where we're kind of equal weight, buyers and sellers are kind of agreement in price, we need to fall back to our trend and our support and resistance. Okay, trend and support and resistance. When I look at, and try to visualize this, guys. Um, when we have a very strong price support in a chart, um, look at it as this is the perfect place for a great big herd of bulls. Okay, that's supposed to be a longhorn bull there. Doesn't work very well, but uh, bulls to be lining up, working to support that area. So if T2122 is right in the middle, then I need to be thinking about, am I in an upside trend or am I in a downside trend? An upside trend in the market, I would look for that opportunity that those bulls might find that inspiration to push on through that level there in the chart. The other side, if we've got a big resistance up here and we're downtrending in the market and we're rallying back to that resistance, okay, we want to look for those bears right here, right? The bears are building a defense here to fight, just like the bulls are def working to defend here to fight. So when we're when we're in the middle of the market, always fall back to what's the trend? Where's my support and resistance? See, if we were to rally back Here and I see T2122 in the mid zone. And the diamonds has rallied back up to here. And it's we're in the mid zone and I see bears coming in. I'm gonna be thinking short. Alright. If we spend a you know um a a timeout here resting sideways just chopping between here boom 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 we're in the middle of t2122 and i see bears overpowering those bulls i gotta be short Okay, so remember, bulls and bears are, are uh, that's, just, that's just the battle, that's the constant battle that's going on in the market. Are we pricing the stock correctly? That's why we always get that ebb and flow in the market. We rally and then we pull back, or we sink and then we rally back. It's just that ebb and flow. We're looking for the right price of the stock. No one knows exactly what it is, and it's that bull and bear fight that gets us there. Okay, we're trying to reach consensus.
Um, there's small there's small fees for indexes. For some reason, the indexes get away with charging um, for their data. Um, but it's like, I don't know, it's like a buck or something like that. It's not like it's, it's expensive. So as a, as a general rule, most people who buy T2122 get the gold version. That's all you need. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks everybody for listening. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I, I know it's important to me and I hope you can see why it's important to me and how you can incorporate this into improving your trading. Thanks for listening.